I'm Professor Larry Chambers and I'm the Chair of the uh, uh, Knowledge Translation Committee of the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging. The Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging is different from other studies for a number of reasons. One of them is that it's, uh, it's following people over 20, a 20-year 20 period. Uh, it's also following a very large number of people over 20 years, uh, 50,000 people. There are very few uh, studies of this kind that have ever been done in history in other countries and certainly the first in Canada of this kind. And finally, it's uh, unique in the sense that it's uh, gathering data on both nature and nurture. Uh, we're born with uh, certain characteristics because of our genes and who our parents are, etc. And then in addition, we are, we are exposed to a number of things during our lifetime uh, that, that we call the, the nurture. We also have different types of ex uh, support that we receive during that time. We have different occupations, etc. And uh, this will be a, a very full, uh, full examination of those kinds of issues and to see what comes first. The, uh, the, um, the characteristic and then the disease, for example, or does the disease come first and then other, other issues start to come up? Well, first of all, the Canadian Longitudinal Study in Aging will uh, be of great interest to those people in the Canadian public that are interested in their health and, and living to uh, a ripe old age and uh, being able to function during that whole time. Uh, that's certainly a goal of mine to, uh, to just keep going and, uh, and be physically and uh, mentally alert till, uh, till it's all over. Uh, the second group are, of course, policymakers that have to make decisions about health services in this country. Uh, the, uh, the, the extent to which uh, chronic disease is, uh, is a huge issue in our healthcare system as, as the Canadian population becomes, quotes, older, as uh, baby boomers are increasing the number of people who are uh, over 65. And of course, chronic disease is uh, most prevalent in that group. And finally, researchers will be of great um, interest to, will have great interest in the longitudinal study because, as I said earlier, the uniqueness of the study, the fact that they follow, that the study follows people for 20 years, the very large number of people, 50,000 people, we'll be able to look at more uh, or less frequent uh, diseases, less frequent characteristics than most studies are able to, um, to, uh, to uh, examine. Our challenge with the, the knowledge exchange and translation work of the, uh, of the, uh, the long, Canadian Longitudinal Study in Aging is to um, make that evidence available through a multiple, multiplicity of facilitation methods, through media, through conferences, through scientific papers, through support groups, through uh, uh, new, uh, new things like Facebook and Twitter, etc. And, uh, and also um, uh, making sure that th those organizations and those individuals that are, that are keen to get the information, we contact and make sure they, they receive it. I would like to just point out again that uh, the Canadian Longitudinal Study is, uh, is a fantastic study and I feel very privileged to be part of it and uh, we're very privileged in Canada to, to have this, um, this uh, kind of work going on and the, uh, the kinds of things that um, we're able to do with this study is, uh, is, uh, is um, a huge breakthrough in science in Canada. The second thing is in, in um, uh, discussions I've had with people outside the country, international researchers and experts, they, they uh, uh, are all in agreement that um, we have a world-class study and it's probably the best in the world.